<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. We have another great big fluffy pillow for you in our big fluffy pillow series. We've done a star, we've done a heart, so we had to add a great big moon to the set. And moons and stars seem to be trending everywhere right now. So I thought this would be a stylish and timely big fluffy pillow to add to your decor. I've also made one using a 5.5 millimeter hook and a worsted weight yarn so you can see what a small version of this little moon pillow looks like and let me just say this makes an amazing neck rest <laughs> but if you're gonna make a big fluffy one with me today make sure you've got your big fluffy yarn big bulky super bulky yarn like a size 6 your 10 millimeter hook let's grab everything we need head on into the craft table and make ourselves up a great big fluffy moon pillow To make our big fluffy crescent moon pillow, I'm using Bernie Baby Blanket Yarn. It's a size 6 super bulky yarn, it's the lilac color, and you need about 200 grams of it. So if you're going to get the 100 gram balls like this one is here, you need two of them. I'm using stuffing from a couple of old pillows I've taken apart. Um, I'm using the polyester fiber fill stuffing today. Because of the shape of this pillow, I want my stuffing to be nice and light. You need a pair of scissors. A yarn needle, big and sturdy enough that it can handle the size of your big yarn. And a 10 millimeter size crochet hook or a US 15, one of the big ones. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Couple things to remember when you're using the big fluffy thick yarn and a large hook. Your stitches are going to be bigger than normal and this yarn doesn't flow like your typical worsted weight acrylic or cotton does. We're going to begin with a slip knot. It's a little on the sticky side, this yarn, so be patient with yourself and don't try to speed through it. <laughs> We're going to begin by chaining a length of 75. So 75, 75 chains. Once you've chained 75 chains, flatten them down and make sure that you have 75. So flatten them and count them. That's what your chains should look like. We're dealing with big fluffy yarn and a large hook so our stitches look a little different than they normally do. So take a moment and acclimatize yourself to the look of those chains because that's what you're going to be working for the next row. So row one, we're going to begin with a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's the first one, here's the second one. Grab the top loop and half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and now we're going to do a little repeater pattern. We're going to half double crochet two chains together. So here are the next two chains. So there's the top loop, the top loop. We're going to half double crochet them both together. So you wrap your yarn around your hook, pick up a loop in the first chain, don't wrap a second time, just pick up a loop in the second chain. You should have four loops on your hook across two chains Wrap once more and pull back through everything. That is a big, thick stitch, but it only counts as one. You can see there's the stitch across the top. So there's the first half double crochet we made, and the second stitch is two together, and it only counts as one. Now we're going to half double crochet in each of the next four chains. So grab the top loops of them only, and half double crochet, nice and easy, across the next four. Keep making sure that your chained foundation row hasn't twisted on you. Keep sort of flattening it out so you're looking at all these nice flat chains and you're just using the top loop because that's kind of an easier way to identify the part of the chain that you need to work into. So once you've half double crocheted two together and half double crocheted into the next four chains, you're going to repeat this. You're going to repeat this little half double crochet, two together, half double crochet into the next four, 12 times in total. So that's one set we've done. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together, or the next two chains, and then half double crochet into each of the next four chains. That'll be a second set, and you're going to repeat that 10 more times for 12 sets in total. And I'll see you near the end of row one.
Nearing the end of row one, I've done my little half double crochet two together, half double crochet in the next four stitches, a total of 12 times repeated. That leaves me with one chain at the end of my foundation chain row. I'm going to half double crochet into that last chain. And if you count up all your stitches, you should have 62. So we started with this chained foundation row of 75. We have decreased to 62, and we are going to decrease every row hereafter. Chain one, turn your work, and then we're on to row two. We're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. Slip stitch into this stitch and keep it nice and loose. It's a little tricky to do with this yarn, but just try to make sure that your slip stitch is loose because you may need to use it later on. So ensure that you can at least get your hook or your fingers underneath those loops. So slip stitch into the first stitch, try to keep it loose. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together, so you may remember you have to turn your work to see the tops of your stitches. Don't be confused by that. This is the top of your work. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. Oops. Like I say, it's big yarn and a big hook takes a little getting used to. It's nice and slow. Half double crochet two together. Now we're going to start a repeat. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. and half double crochet into each of the next five. And that's the repeater. You're going to half double crochet into the first two sets, or the first two stitches of a set, half double crochet into each of the next five stitches, and you're going to repeat that little thing eight times. And then I'll show you what to do when we get near the end. Right, we're nearing the end of row two. Every set began with a half double crochet two together, and then you half double crocheted into each of the next five stitches. You did that eight times. That should leave you with one, two, three stitches left in your row. You're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. And then slip stitch into the last stitch. And remember, you want to keep that loose. There. Chain one and turn. We're going to slip stitch across the first four stitches of row three. So that includes the slip stitch that you made to end the row. This is why I say you want to make sure that your slip stitches are usable. So beginning row three, we're going to slip stitch across the first four stitches. And it's sort of grabby yarn, so make sure that your slip stitches are not too tight. Oh, and at the end of row two, you should have 52 stitches. So just in case you're keeping count, <laughs> 52 stitches at the end of row two. We're into row three. So we've slip stitched across the first four stitches. There they all are. And now we're going to start a little repeater pattern. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. And then we're going to half double crochet into each of the next six stitches. So half double crochet the first two stitches together, half double crochet into each of the next six, and you're going to repeat that five times. And I'll see you near the end of row three. We're nearing the end of row three. Our repeat pattern was half double crochet two stitches together and half double crochet into each of the next six. We repeated that five times in total. Now we're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. Slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to leave the rest of the stitches of that previous row untouched. So there they all there. There should be four of them plus your little turning chain and that should mimic the other end, because what we're essentially doing is creating a crescent. And your work might want to turn right into a circle, don't worry, as soon as we get this thing sewn together and stuffed up, it's going to look like a big fat moon. <laughs> 
chain one, and turn. So at the end of row three, you should have 41 stitches in total. That does not include the rest of, stitch of the stitches of row two. So only 41 stitches in row three. Chain one, turn. We're going to slip stitch across the next two stitches. So that includes the little slip stitch that you closed off the last row with. So try and keep them loose. I know it's a little tough. And here we go. This new repeater pattern, we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together. And then half double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. And you're going to repeat that one three times only. So three times in total, half double crochet into the first two stitches, and then half double crochet into each of the next nine. And I'll see you near the end. We're nearing the end of row four. Our repeater pattern was half double crochet, two stitches together, and then half double crochet into each of the next nine. You were to repeat that three times in total. That brings you close to the end. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and then that is it for row four. You leave all of those other stitches untouched, so pretend they're not even there. And all of the stitches that you did work in this row, and it should look like it started up here, so you should see definite sort of starts and stops in your rows. You chained one, turned, slipped into the first two, started our repeater pattern. You should have a total of 32 stitches at the end of row four. Chain one, turn your work, we're into row five. And here we go. We're going to slip stitch across the first four stitches. So that's the slip stitch from the last row. We're going to use it. We're going to slip stitch nice and cozy, little on the loose side, so we can use them later into those first four stitches. And now we have a repeat. We're going to half double crochet the first two stitches of the set together. Half double crochet, two together. Half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And you're going to repeat that only three times, so three times in total. So half double crochet, two stitches together, half double crochet into the next five. Only repeat that three times total and I'll see you near the end of row five. We're nearing the end of row five. Our little repeater pattern, which you should have repeated three times in total, was half double crochet, two together, half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and that is it for row five. You're not going to touch the rest of those stitches. All the stitches you did work in row five should total 22. Row six, we're going to chain one, turn our work. We're going to slip stitch across the first three stitches. So remember to try and keep them nice and loose. And then you're going to half double crochet in each of the next 12. After you've half double crocheted into 12, slip stitch into the next stitch. Leave the rest of those stitches unworked. You should have 15 stitches, including your three slips, in row 6. Row 7, last row of the build of the basic crescent. We're going to chain 1, turn our work. We're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together, so that includes your slip stitch. So make sure you get that one. And the next one. Half double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and then you'll repeat that. Half double crochet two together, half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Once you've finished your half double crochet two together, half double crochet into the next three stitches, and you've done that twice. We're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. And then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And that completes the build of each side. So sides one and two are identical for the first seven rows, 
and it's just the border that changes and really it's not much of a change. You're going to work the border row first going in one direction and then you're going to chain one, turn, and go the other direction for side two. So it's exactly the same concept, it's just that your numbers are going to change a little bit depending on what side you're on. So row one, or side one, border row one, goes like this. You finish row seven, and you're immediately going to single crochet into the next few stitches. Yes, we're changing to single crochet for the inside edge of our crescent. You're going to single crochet into the next 14 stitches. So there should be 14 stitches between here and here on your crescent moon. So start single crocheting. There should be three stitches and they are probably slip stitches so they're going to be a little tight. Three to start with and then that brings you to the edge of a step. Step looks like this, you're up nice and high, pull up on it, you see the stitch that it's anchored in, ignore it, go to the next stitch and single crochet nice and tightly into that one. So try to make that, every time you step down or step up, try to make it a nice tight little single crochet because it will get rid of that high cliff of a step. Single crochet into the next few stitches, that will bring you up to yet another step. Do the same thing and I'll see you just before the end of the edge, the inside edge of our crescent. All right, from your slip stitch at the end of row seven, you should have single crocheted 14 stitches that'll take you down two steps and leave you with one stitch left at the very end of the inside edge of your crescent moon. You're gonna work two single crochets into that stitch, because that is a corner stitch. These two single crochets will help us turn the corner so that we're looking at the short edge of the top of our crescent. We're gonna work two single crochets across this edge. So one, doesn't matter where, and then here's another one, two. And that should bring you up to the underside of your first chain of your foundation chain row. Your little tail might still be there if you didn't weave it in. That is a corner stitch. We're gonna work two half double crochets into that stitch. Now I'm gonna try and work over that fiddly little short tail. So two half double crochets into the first chain that you made to start this project. And now you're going to work a half double crochet in the bottom of every single foundation chain all the way across, except for the last one, you should be working 72. So 72 half double crochets across the next few chains. 72 half double crochets later should bring you up to the last underside of your foundation chain row. Work two half double crochets into that last foundation chain stitch underside. That is a corner stitch. It turns us around so that we're looking at the short edge. You're going to stick two single crochets up this short edge. So just jam your hook in anywhere and work two somewhat evenly spaced stitches, single crochets. And that brings us up to the inside edge of our crescent moon again. So here's the first stitch of the inside edge. It's a corner. So we're gonna work two single crochets into it. And now you're going to work a single crochet across the next 20 stitches. So here is the beginning of our, or I should say the, the single crochet border starts here. This was the beginning of row seven right here. So row seven turned into our border row. So we've got to get ourselves all the way up and across and over here. So this should be 20 stitches. So you want to start single crocheting in each stitch. Remember, some of them are going to be slip stitches. So if you made them nice and loose, you shouldn't have any trouble um, getting your hook through them. When you get to a step, Work the stitch just before the step. If you're not sure, pull up on it and you'll see the stitch that it, it holds up. You don't want to work that. You want to skip right up and over 
and into the top of the stitch at the top of the step. Make that a nice tight single crochet and the step will disappear. You're going to do that a few times. Just remember um, you've got one, two, that's a step, this is a step because you're going up to the top of chain of row seven and then you're going to zip across row seven which was ten stitches and you'll be slip stitching with a slip stitch to the top of your first single crochet. So it might look a bit fluffy because you're working with such big yarn. So just take your time, put it down if you have to and remind yourself where you are. But you should have 20 stitches to fill before you get back to the first stitch of your border row. So if you count 20, you shouldn't go too far astray. 20 stitches later, you should be right back to the first single crochet you made after that slip stitch that ended row 7. It should be 20. If you're at 21 or 19, don't worry about it. Just try and work the same number going the opposite direction on your other side. So now, you should have 118 stitches at the end of your border row. You can snip your yarn and fasten off. You can go ahead and start your second crescent moon side. Remember that your crescent moons will be exactly the same, rows one through seven. But unlike row side one, on side two, when you get to the end of row seven, you're going to chain one, flip your work, and you're going to work your border going all the way back in the opposite direction. So instead of beginning with 14 stitches, you're going to chain one, turn, and have 20 stitches to work. That'll get you to the last stitch at the top of the inside of your crescent moon. Work two single crochets into it. Single crochet twice down the short edge. When you get to the first underside chain, work two half double crochets. Half double crochet in the next 72 chains, or the undersize of them. At the last chain, work two half double crochets in the underside of that foundation chain row single crochet twice up the other short side and then that brings you to the inside of your crescent moon again. Work two single crochets in that first stitch and then it'll be single crochet in the next 14 back to the beginning where you can join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of your border row. So just work border row in reverse for your second side. And once you've got two, we can start sewing them together. Once you're finished side two, make sure you leave a nice long tail because you want to sew your two sides together using it. So I would recommend a meter and a half or even a bit more. It's better to err on the side of too much tail than not enough so that you know you have enough to put the whole thing together. The other thing you can do is take a moment and weave in any of your short tails if you still have some of them showing. This is a good time to do that. So grab your big yarn needle and on the opposite side, so the wrong side of your fabric, you can just pick up some of the stitches, or loops at least, of the stitches, and just weave in your little short tails. Because this is pretty grabby fabric, it won't want to un unravel. Now we can start sewing and stuffing. So the right side of your, um, either side of your crescent moon will be the side where you can see the little cute V-stitch of your single crochet border along the inside edge. So if you flip it upside down to the wrong side, you'll see the little bumps, the little extra bump running along underneath the top stitch. That's the wrong side. And this is the right side with the little neat V's. Take side one, flip it upside down so that the wrong side is facing up. And you can take side two with right side facing up, so the wrong sides are together. Pair both sides of them up. You can thread up that long tail you left with your yarn needle. And then, making sure that your edges are aligned, you can start to sew the inside edge of your crescent moon together. You want to grab sets of stitches, so come all the way through both sides, through both stitches, and these first few <laughs> stitches are going to be really, really long ones because of our long sewing tail. So 
and then you're going to do the same thing for the next set. You can work all the way up the inside edge of your crescent moon, stopping every once in a while to make sure that you're still aligned. Get all the way around and then maybe halfway down and then we can start stuffing the top of our moon pillow. But we need to get a good chunk of it sewn up first before we can start putting in the stuffing. Once you've sewn all the way up and around the top and down, oh, maybe a quarter of the way, enough anyway that you can get your arm in and your, your fingers up to the very top edge of your crescent moon, you can start to stuff your crescent. So start by taking small amounts of stuffing, whatever your stuffing you're using, and get it all the way up into that top tip section. You don't want to overstuff your um, pillow because you don't want your stuffing showing through your different stitches and you don't want it to be too too heavy. Because of the shape of this pillow, it's going to naturally want to, the two ends are going to want to come together. So if you use lighter stuffing like I am and don't overstuff it, then it should keep its shape when it sits on your couch or your bed. So go ahead and work at stuffing up your pillow and then you can continue sewing. So once you get down to about here with the stuffing, you can continue sewing, sew a little way, stuff it some more, and then you're going to probably be abreast of where you started. You're going to want to sew all the way up and around the other tip, leave a section open so that you can continue stuffing it, and then you can sew and stuff it shut. And I'll see you when you're done. Just sewing up the last stitch here, I took the opportunity to put in a little bit more stuffing as I neared the end of the sewing job. And that is it. So your entire moon pillow should be stuffed and sewn together. Now all you want to do is make a knot. Because this is pretty grabby material, um, doing it once around. So grab any stitch, if you can see that there. And if it's too much yarn at this point, you can trim it down. In fact, I think I might just do that. I feel like I'm wielding a holiday bird here in the sink. <laughs> okay, let me just trim down a bit of my yarn. I'm going to re-grab, uh, pull my, my yarn needle off the rest of it. And uh, string this back up. And then I'm just going to weave in my ends. So, I'm going to try and get this in a better position for you guys. I've got a little knot and now right across the tops of the stitches I'm just going to find a row of stitches, slip my needle underneath them, and just weave in that tail. There we go. So there it is going one direction. And then I'm going to skip over a piece of the stitch and head back in the other direction. I'll do that a couple times and then I will just take whatever's left of the yarn and bury it in the rest of the pillow. And there we go. Ooh, it's big. Barely fits in the screen. I'm gonna have to zoom out for a bigger look. So maybe it's not so much the man in the moon anymore, it's the girl in the moon. <laughs> and that is a big, fat, fluffy moon pillow. I just love this thing. I'm going to go curl up with it on the couch and watch a movie, I think. <laughs> anyway, I hope you had fun making this along with us today on the Jaded Stitches Show. And if you'd like a copy of the written pattern, you'll find one for sale in our Etsy shop. And a big thank you to everyone who has popped in there and done some shopping lately. Until next time on the Jaded Stitches Show, Stay safe, stay crafty, have an awesome week, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.